Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy, my children. Come on in the door. Don't, don't be shy. Come on in the door. In the house of the Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. Go ahead, have a seat. I want to welcome you to this Sunday morning sermon on Super Bowl Sunday. Welcome to the Church of Reality, the Reality's Temple on Earth. Deacons, can I get a amen? Mm -hmm. Ooh, my Lord, my, oh my God, oh my Lord. Now look at here. Look at here, my people. This is Super Bowl Sunday. It is also the time that we take to give praise and honor to God, our Creator, the Most High, our Savior. What we want to talk about these few minutes, my friends, we are taught or some of us, we are made mockery because in our church, hanging on our wall, is that of what Jesus Christ. It don't make no difference what his color is. It's just a symbol of Jesus. And that's all that is important. White Jesus. It don't make no difference. Because in God, God don't see color. But apparently somebody see color because they made the Jesus in the color or the skin color that they are. And many of, of us using common sense from that part of the world, chances are, if Jesus did exist, chances are he would not look like this symbol that is on the walls of many black churches, not only in the South, but all over the nation. The blackity black conscious community, the Pan African community, the Comedic, the Hebrew Israelite, whatever these blackity black, uh, uh, so black, when they get cut, their blood is not red, it's black. They are so black and they know it all. They tell us, they tell us. That is wrong for you to have to be a black man, to be a soul brother and sister, and you have a white God. That's what they tell us, yes. Mm. <laughs> now we're going to use their logic. And let's say that's true. Now, are you going to follow your own logic? Or are you going to be contradictory and a hypocrite? Let's examine the, the ideological, the, uh, what, what you want to say? This claim. Well, brother, come on now. If you are a Chinese man, your God is, looks Chinese. Come on, brother. If you're Indian, 
the God looks Indian. So, brother, don't you think if we are black African people that the image of God that we have should also be black? Should it be African? Let's look at the teachings of the nation of Islam. Because I was taught the same thing. Reject white Jesus. Bad, bad, bad. Don't believe in white Jesus. That's bad. Don't believe in white Jesus. But when you look at the nation of Islam teachings, who do they have on the wall? The image of a white man. Now they have and make up their excuses about this image. Well, you know, he had to come in sinful flesh in order to come among us. Well, uh, Marcus Garvey was a dark black man. And he did very fine coming among us. Didn't he? Two to six million members in the Universal Negro Improvement Association, right? Much larger than the Nation of Islam. He did all right, but we're going to just, you got to look beyond. You say that white Jesus is bad. A black man should have an image of himself as a God and the nation of Islam have on their wall the image of a person they call a biracial but this biracial person well first of all this person is a biracial person he's not original he, he's not a black man or woman he's a little bit of both worlds but he definitely looks like a Caucasian person and you put it on your wall so what's the difference between Master Farad Muhammad and why Jesus? Except your story that you're spinning. That's the only difference. And when you look at the Nation of Islam, when you look at their leadership, you see the lighter skinned black people are the ones who are the ones leading the way. And the darker has to follow. So what difference is it? What difference does it make if it's white Jesus or black Jesus? And mind you, some of us have colored the taken down the white image of Jesus and now he's black. This symbolism. Now, we go to the Morse Science Temple. Shout out to Morris, uh, Morris TV, Morris World TV, Morris World TV citizens. Now, to my knowledge, the Prophet Noble Drew Ali went outside of America and he was groomed and created a form of Islam. Now, I don't think that the Morris Science Temple have a, some type of image of God their God is invisible but at the same time you went and picked up something from a foreign people because Islam did not come from you you went somewhere else and got somebody else God and adapted that God. So what you're doing ain't no different than white Jesus. Because that God don't belong to you. That belongs to somebody else. That teaching, that those holy books, that thinking process did not come from you. It come from a foreign person. So regardless if your God is invisible, your ideology or still the image 
is still foreign. It did not come from you. So Master Farah Muhammad clearly is a white image and clearly the invisible God of the Moor Science Temple or many of you, it comes from a foreign source. Now, there are those who say or may claim I'm an African American. So we embrace the African gods we put the African gods and all these symbols and Kemet and Egypt, Ethi uh, ancient Ethiopia, Timbuktu, or, or whatever. You say that your God supposed to be like you. If I'm a black man, I'm supposed to have a black God. So, if we were born in America, Shouldn't we have an African-American God? Well, we are practicing the God from Africa. That's Africa. You say that whatever you are, your God's supposed to be like you. My question is, if God can come to, the, to those on, on that continent, if God can come to those in Europe, God can come to those in Asia, God can come to those in Antarctica, why can't God come to the so-called Negro in America and give us our own prophet, the African-American God? Why do we have to take hand-me-downs from Arabia or Africa or China or India why we always have to have somebody's leftovers and they tell us that ain't how you worship God because it, the God gave it to them it's their stuff and if you're not doing it right it's their crap they can tell you you're not a Muslim. You're not a real Hebrew. You're not a real uh, comedic. Because it belongs to somebody else. God should give us our own prophet. God should give us an African American God. We have lived in this country going on 500 years. Don't you think that we deserve from God our own prophet a God that is African American that looks like us and is us and we didn't get it from no other source except God himself he gave it straight to us we didn't borrow it from Arabia we didn't borrow it from the Sudan we didn't borrow it from Tokyo God came with no middlemen. God came directly to the African American, the so-called Negro, soul brothers and sisters, a soul God. And ain't nobody can tell me how to worship. Nobody can tell me nothing. I'm not doing something right. Because my God came to me personally. No middleman from Arabia or Africa or nowhere. That's the God. If I'm going to worship God, that's what I want. No more hand me downs from other folks. What we'll make them so special that they can have a, their own God, a personal relationship with God, but we can't? We always got to have somebody's leftovers.